Hi, and welcome to Coding TensorFlow, where you will learn all about coding machine learning and AI with TensorFlow. I'm Lawrence Moroni, a developer advocate for TensorFlow, and I'll be your guide to TensorFlow Lite today. TensorFlow Lite is TensorFlow's lightweight solution for mobile and embedded devices. It lets you run machine learned models on mobile devices with low latency quickly, so you can take advantage of them to do classification, regression, or anything else that you might want without necessarily incurring a round trip to the server. It's presently supported on Android and iOS via a C++ API, as well as a Java wrapper for Android developers. On Android devices that support it, the interpreter will also use Android Neural Networks API for hardware acceleration. Otherwise, it can just default to the CPU for execution. Before you start with TensorFlow Lite, you will need a trained model. You'll train it from a set of data using a high-powered machine. And when you're done, you'll have a model file and a set of associated checkpoints. This model can then be exported to be used on a mobile device. But before we do that, let's take a look at the model itself. There are a number of formats that it could be in. All of these formats are based on the concept of protocol buffers, and they define data structures. With a protocol buffer, or protobuf for short, you can use tools to generate code in C, Python, and other languages that can then be used to load, save, and access the data in a simple way. You can learn more about protocol buffers at this link. The first of these is a graph.def file, which will have the .pb extension if it's binary, or .pbtxt if it's in text format. While the text format, as you can see on this slide, is designed to be human readable, it's also very verbose. And it's not as size or memory efficient as its binary counterpart. Either way, it's the heart of your model data. It contains a description of your graph in a way that can be read by another process. For example, this model defines the operations of multiplying matrices A and B together to get C. You may also encounter a checkpoint file. And this contains serialized variables from a TensorFlow graph. It doesn't contain the graph structure, just the state of the variables at a particular iteration of the learning. It's useful to tell you variable values at different points in the learning process. There's also a frozen graph def, where the variables from the latest checkpoint file are combined with the graph and turned into constants. This is important in the process of using TensorFlow Lite. You'll see in a moment how you can combine a graph def and a checkpoint to make one of these. The process is called freezing because every variable is converted into a constant with a value from the constant read from a particular checkpoint. Finally, there's the TensorFlow Lite model. LITE, which is built from the frozen graph using the TensorFlow Optimizing Converter Tool, or TOCO for short. The previous section is great if you've done a lot of work to train models, and you either don't want to rerun the code and retrain them, or maybe you don't have access to the original code and data. But if you do have access to the code, you can also go straight to the TensorFlow Lite creation process in your code as part of the training. Let's have a look what that looks like. Here's a sample piece of code that converts a tensor containing an image from the session's graph def into a TF Lite object. As you can see, it's pretty straightforward. It's a single line. Though I'll give one small word of warning. Because TensorFlow Lite is presently in developer preview, there are quite a few operations in TensorFlow that are not yet handled by TensorFlow Lite. So it may not be quite ready for your custom models, but we're working on it all the time. So for the rest of this video, I'm going to talk about some of the more popular public models for common scenarios that are fully compatible with TensorFlow Lite. To get a compatibility guide, check out this link. Two of the more popular models that we've tested with TensorFlow Lite and you can use with the preview are the first is Inception v3. This was built to validate the popular ImageNet data set. And this is used in universities as a benchmark for image validation. So for example, using Inception, this image received these classifications, showing an 88% chance that this image is a panda bear. Interestingly enough, the number two result is for something called an Indris, which looks like this. And you can see the confusion, because it's also a cute black and white little critter. In addition to Inception, TensorFlow Lite also supports the mobile nets set of models. These have been designed to be mobile first, so they have lower power requirements. 
but they're not quite as accurate as something like Inception. Let's take a look at an example of a mobile net model running on Android. This app takes a look at the camera feed and uses a trained mobile net to classify the dominant images in the picture. Here, for example, you can see I was holding up a water bottle to the camera, and it got it right. You can download the code and the mobile net models for this as part of the TensorFlow for Poets code labs at these links. In part one, you'll learn all about mobile net image classification. And in part two, you'll see how to deploy that to a mobile device using TensorFlow Lite. I'll also be making some more videos going into the details of how you can build an app just like this one, providing image classification on both Android and iOS. So make sure you subscribe to this channel right now. And if you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below. Thank you very much, and it's time to start coding TensorFlow. Don't forget to click the Subscribe button for more great videos like these ones.